All right, we are back with the smoke detector project here. And as you saw in the last video, I was able to hack in a trig board so that this off the shelf smoke slash carbon monoxide detector here can send out a push notification with the trig board. So when this starts alarming, wakes up the trig board, connects to the Wi-Fi network and gets a push notification out to my phone. And that worked pretty good, except towards the end when I tested carbon monoxide with it. And I had to finally pick up a can of this carbon monoxide tester here. So that it was a little bit easier to test this whole thing. And uh, that didn't work. And the reason for that was because the carbon monoxide alarm is different from the smoke alarm, obviously, right? Um, it's three short beeps, which were just not long enough to wake the trig board up. Because if you remember, we were monitoring the actual buzzer circuitry so that any time the buzzer was, you know, on or active, it would wake the trig board up. So pretty simple circuit I had to add in just to basically elongate the signal. So now the trig board is more sensitive. So even the quick chirp from the carbon monoxide alarm can wake up the trig board. And guess what? That worked out great. But that revealed more issues, actually. Turns out the smoke detector here has a self-diagnostic test that every 33 minutes or so, that test point actually pulses high quickly. And then there must be some feedback here so that it knows that the buzzer circuitry is all working. But that also meant that the trig board was waking up every 33 minutes sending out a push notification. So that meant I had to go and find new test points to wake the trig board up that don't have this self-diagnostic test. And I've got that to work. So let me give you a quick demo of it waking on both carbon monoxide and smoke. Check this out. So how cool is that, right? It works perfectly. So the perfect IoT device now. And because the trig board is so low power, as you saw in the last video, we're powering it straight from the smoke detector. We pulled just one or two microamps from the two AA batteries. And the new test points I'm using are both for smoke and carbon monoxide, meaning that it's also possible now to send unique push notifications based on what you detect. In this example here that I'm showing you, it sends out the same push notification, but you could actually do this. And if you're interested in that, leave a comment below and maybe I'll update the docs page with some instructions on how to do that. So here was the fun part. Oh, well, maybe not so fun at the time because I had already made a video uh, showing you how to hack into the smoke detector and that might still work if you use that same test point but I wouldn't recommend it. So I updated the docs page here with the recommended solution here, but if you still wanted to do smoke detection only, I would still suggest changing the test point and everything here would still work. So again, I just wanna point out before we go any further that this is not something you should do on your primary smoke detector, carbon monoxide detector, whatever, because if a wire breaks off in here or, you know, we screw something up, you could potentially completely disable this smoke detector. Um, it's very easy. What if you short something out over here, drain the batteries down to nothing in a matter of hours and have no idea? So obviously this needs to be something just to supplement your existing system. So the new method here was to actually use the LEDs instead. So instead, you know, I was using the buzzer before to wake everything up, and that was what I was focusing on. But then I found these LEDs here, and I traced them back to the microcontroller and found that they are active low. So the anode side of the LED is being held high at 3.3 volts, and then the microcontroller grounds through a series resistor uh, to turn the LEDs on. And we've got two LEDs here, one for carbon monoxide, the other for uh, the smoke alarm. 
and that's what I hacked into. So I just kind of looked at the microcontroller pin that is being driven low, and then just kind of held that, you know, my continuity meter on there on that pin, and then swept around on the back, and I found the two test points here. So over here on the docs page, you can see a nice close-up there, N59 and N43. So N43 is for carbon monoxide, N59 for smoke. And see, the trig board doesn't really care because, you know, we can wake on active low or active high. So I'll talk about this little circuit here, but this was basically for the same reason I had before with the carbon monoxide uh, pulse being too short to wake the trig board up. So this basically elongates that and ors the two LEDs together. It would be cool if it was just one LED, but we've got two and we want to obviously wake on both carbon monoxide and smoke detection. Or maybe you don't care, and in that case, you only need to wire up to N59, which is what I would recommend if you're going to use the old way, which is a simple, easy circuit. So if I go to the smoke detection only, where I'm showing here, tying into N23, I would suggest moving this over to N59. But if you want both smoke and carbon monoxide detection, so let's just go over this circuit real quick here. It's uh, actually very easy. These two P-channel MOSFETs are basically just acting like switches in parallel to the trig board so that when either of these input signals to it go low, they're going to turn on these P-channel MOSFETs, either one. It's basically oaring the two signals together so that if either of them go low, it will wake the trig board up. So normally, when this is just sitting here, We've got 3.3 volts on both of these signals, keeping both of these P-channel MOSFETs off. So the trig board input just sees zero volts because as you kind of trace this along, you'll see that it's tied to ground or it's an open circuit. And we'll explain what all of this business here is with the, the resistors and caps. But normally this is just sitting low. Now, when the signals go off, they are going to pull low which turns the P-channel MOSFETs on. And when that happens, you see we've got 10 ohms, and the way the trig board works is we've got 4.2 volts sitting at the positive terminal at all times. So when they turn on, we've got this 10 ohm resistor here to limit the inrush current through the 4.7 microfarad capacitor. So if we trace this along, as soon as it turns on, let's say this bottom one turns on, we've got a smoke alarm going through the source, through the drain, and then there is our inrush current through the 4.7 microfarad capacitor. So that limits that current, charges up the capacitor, and if it's a carbon monoxide detection going off, this is a quick beep here. So that's why we've got this capacitor here to elongate it, to keep the 3.3 the volts, or I should say the 4.2 volts, because we're charging up through 4.2 volts here, It'll keep that cap charged up and long enough there so that we've got a high signal into the trig board long enough to wake it up. So what's the point of the 100K here? Well, that's a bleeder for this to bleed off. You know, if once you charge this up, there's like no current at all. So that's why I put the 100K there to then bleed off the 4.2 volts off of the 4.7 volt <laughs> microfarad capacitor back to ground to basically reset everything. So let's just quickly test this out and, and show you what this looks like in the configurator. All right, so the board is powered up here. So we're going to wake and uh, initialize the configurator. Hold the wake button until we see it flashing. There we go. Okay, we'll get the configurator launched here. There we go. So there you have it, contact open. So right now it thinks that there is no signal there. So right now, this is being held at zero volts or an open circuit. We've got the 100K there pulling it down to ground. Uh, and even if this cap in 100K was not there, this would still show contact open. So now let's hit the test button and you'll see this go contact closed. All right, so what was cool about that is you saw it go contact closed, but it didn't immediately go back to contact open. 
and that's because of the 4.7 microfarad capacitor. In the last video you saw it go contact open, close, open, close on that long beep. Here it stayed closed throughout, which is perfect. That's what we want this thing to do. So anyway, that I think is all I've got for this video. This is a total hack job over here just for experimentation. I need to clean all of this up, you know, 3D print some kind of enclosure. I was even thinking there's enough room in the detector itself maybe for the trig board. But anyway, I think that's everything. If you got any questions on anything, like I said, if you want to see how to build a circuit to also detect which, car which uh, alarm has woke you up, you know, the carbon monoxide versus smoke, let me know about that. I'll put something up in the docs here on how to do that. Uh, but that's all I got. Thanks for watching.